Hey friends, I'm coming to you today from my closet because I have some updated important information about adrenal insufficiency and COVID. However, my neighbors are doing construction and I have been trying to pop in and record when they stop, but time is not aligning appropriately and I want to get this information out. So I have found the quietest space in my tiny one bedroom. Welcome to my closet. Uh, the National Adrenal Disease Foundation shared this with me and I have gone through and read it. It's like a massive document with information, updated information. And I want to be sure that I'm appropriately sharing what needs to be said. So I'm going to read that. And so I apologize for the informality of it, I guess. I'm just reading their information, but I want to make sure that I get the accurate information out there. In addition to that, I am putting the link of the document with all the information included in it at the bottom of this video because I want you to be able to go through and read it and get the accurate information. That being said, um, recently over the last Time is a wild illusion right now. I would say weeks, but I'm not sure. The endocrine community has taken a, I guess, like a poll on people who have experienced COVID um, and what their symptoms were with adrenal insufficiency and what the protocol was and what the new parameters or procedures should be. So that's what this document is about, is updated information on managing COVID with adrenal insufficiency. And that they want to reiterate that this should be looked at as a guideline because everyone is unique and an individual and every case is going to be different. This is not set in stone the only way to handle these situations. This is just the new updated information. We want everyone to all be on the same page. So we're staying safe and taking care of ourselves. So that being said, I am going to put my glasses on and read the latest information. The very beginning uh, reiterates about patients with adrenal insufficiency being at higher risk for COVID. Yes, they are. Um, and then it talks a little bit about the prevention mode on how we can prevent um, possibly receiving the virus. Uh, and basically, they've kind of broken it down in, in bullet points. The first and foremost is to educate, and that is referring to the individual patient with adrenal insufficiency and their community, their immediate family supportive network of community people educate everyone as far as what their condition is what the protocol is for stress dosing and sick day i will include the sick day protocol stress dosing document you can also find it at the national adrenal disease foundation as well um educating on the stress dosing the sick day as well as how to do an emergency injection Essential, essential information for the individual to know with adrenal insufficiency and their tribe. So that way someone else knows how to give it and when to give it to save their life. Um, so educating that wise. They're also reiterating that individuals with adrenal insufficiency should observe stringent social distancing. Absolutely 100%. If you are not already social distancing in general, you should be. With adrenal insufficiency, it is it shouldn't be a choice. If you are working, they say, I'm going to read the specific sentence. This means that adrenal insufficiency patients should not work in situations that do not allow them to keep their safe distances. Um, and if you are, it is important to provide patients with letters stating this fact to ensure their employees are informed can it, and can adjust the working conditions as appropriate. So if you are still doing that, you can print all this out and you need to communicate with your employer and make sure that they can help keep you safe because this is essential as far as keeping our bodies safe. 
Uh, and then it's talking about being equipped with the appropriate materials. So having the appropriate amount of medication. Now, um, there's been some talk back and forth, and I haven't really done a video on it. Uh, perhaps I will soon with the updated information about uh, hydrocortisone. Um, I'm trying to think of the right word, brain frog. Um, it's unavailable shortage. There's a shortage of hydrocortisone in different types of brands. And so I know this is a tricky area, but they're recommending that everyone should have an extra four week supply of hydrocortisone, 10 milligrams that you could take three times a day. Um, also consider, uh, having a three month hydrocortisone supply every two months. So you can arrange to have them to be delivered by mail. I know some pharmacies do that, but you need to communicate with your endocrinologist and your insurance companies and make that happen so you have that medication on hand for safety. In addition to that, you're gonna make sure you have an up-to-date emergency injection kit uh, filled with your vials, your syringes, your solucortef, so that way you can have the appropriate emergency injection kit if needed. Also, they're saying it's important to have your updated uh, adrenal insufficiency medical information card. I got mine from the National Adrenal Disease Foundation, uh, and it's just information about what you... This card is really great because you just fill in the blanks, and it talks about what you needed to be treated with immediately if someone finds you, your medical card information, emergency contact, your physician, and then uh, just a little note based on... Uh, how to avoid a crisis or correct one. That's great to have. So you have all your updated information. And okay, so now we're going to talk about symptoms of COVID with adrenal sufficiency. So they are saying, now they're recommending... <laughs> As recommended for all affected by COVID-19, patients should rest and counteract the fever by taking six hourly doses of a thousand milligrams paracetamol, I'm going to say that wrong, with appropriate dose adjustment in children. They should try to keep well by hydrating regularly, even during the night, ideally nothing the amount noting the amount of fluid they drink. They should monitor how much urine they pass. The excretion only of a little amounts of dark concentrated urine indicates insufficient hydration, which should prompt further increased oral fluid intake. Patients with adrenal insufficiency confirmed COVID should immediately take double hydrocortisone morning dose and then increase their hydrocortisone replacement to 20 milligrams four times daily. So that's a new updated thing. And the example they've given is 20 milligrams hydrocortisone every six hours. Examples at six, noon, 18, and 24 hour. And in children, their usual daily dose should be administered orally in four equal six hourly doses. So they're saying it's six hour doses now spread out around the clock. Thank you for your patience. I just want to make sure I give you the accurate information. Okay, there's a little bit different information as far as um, slow release steroid. So um, I just think it's really essential that everyone with adrenal insufficiency should read this entire document because there's so much epic information that I don't want you to miss out on any of it. So please just go through and read this. I, I could just sit here and read five pages, but it seems more beneficial for you to go through and do it individually. Um, okay. Under no circumstances should patients hesitate to contact medical emergency services. 100%. If your COVID symptoms are there, you should contact mental emergency services without delay and immediately administer the hydrocortisone emergency injection, 100 milligram. Um, then it's saying if patients and their carers are, should consider making their own way to the hospital if you can't take an ambulance or you don't want to, and then take 50 milligrams of hydrocortisone every six hours. 
And then they list some of the COVID symptoms as far as feeling dizzy or sitting on sitting or standing, feeling very thirsty despite drinking regularly, feeling very cold, shaking uncontrollably, becoming drowsy, confused, or difficult to wake up, developing vomiting or severe diarrhea, increasing shortness of breath with fast breathing, or difficulty speaking in complete sentences. Following emergency injection of 100 milligrams hydrocortisone by self injection or medical emergency personnel, the patients should be maintained on major stress dose hydrocortisone, example 200 milligrams, over 24 hours, preferably in the hospital setting administered intravenously. So that's a big adjustment. Um, and then they're reiterating again with a bolus injection every six hours. So six hours seems to be this marker right now that they've made the adjustments on. And then there's quite a bit of information on how to adjust with children's medication and then how to regularly monitor patients with adrenal insufficiency during the crisis, the COVID crisis in general. Um, everyone should just stay on their regular amount stay inside, stay safe, adjust and be mindful and pay attention to what is happening in your body. More than ever, it's just essential that we keep close note as what is happening, paying attention to um, how we're feeling. It's really hard because a lot of these things that they talk about sometimes can present as symptoms of low cortisol. At least I know I personally experience shortness of breath, have a hard time breathing, or the fatigue or the shaking or the dizziness, that's something that's normal for me. So it's really important to pay attention when it's happening and adjust as, oh, am I low cortisol or is there something else going on? And I highly recommend keeping notes right now and journaling everything and really notice a pattern on what's happening in your body and then doing the appropriate things needed to support yourself. Yes. This was all over the place. I hope that it gave you some foundation. I'm definitely going to include the link so that way you can read up on this on your own and be fluid and understand what is happening in maybe a way that I wasn't able to truly articulate here in the closet with brain fog. But this is the updated information. It is unique to the person. This is just a guideline. It is not the law but stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Thank you guys so much for being here. Light and love, all the spoons, and I hope you have a wonderful day.